Hello, book lovers. And adventurers. Everywhere. My name is Jess. And I'm MC. And this is Is CamCat Unwrapped. Unwrapped. You guys, we have such a special episode in store for you today. We have, as you can see, my good friend and coworker MC Smitherman here for what is going to be a very special Dungeons and Dragons series. We brought on three of our CamCat authors to participate in this, and it's going to be so fantastic and so fun. Uh, MC, why don't you give us the gist? Yeah, so... Hi, my name is MC Smitherman. I'm an actor, writer, editor, and professional dungeon master, uh, specifically in the D&D 5th edition rule set. And that's what we're going to be playing today with our three authors who will be playing the protagonists of their books after they've ended. So there's going to be heavy spoilers for all these books involved, but what we're doing isn't exactly what you have read or will read if you haven't already you should because they're very good books uh but we're going to be going on a little adventure with them and i think that's all that we need to know for now all right i'm gonna go hop over to my little recording station uh and without further ado let's meet our authors hey everybody what's going on my name is alexander james i am a chef and a writer of the woodkin available through camcat press um i enjoy backpacking and dungeons and dragons and amateur jello enthusiast and i hate okra so that's uh everything that i've got sort of going on over here i'm very excited to be here next to these uh fantastic fantasy authors who have invented their characters and worlds out of thin air and uh i'm so excited to play as just a regular dude who lives in the contiguous (laughs) united states of america Hey, I'm Elijah Menchaka. I am the author of the Glint Chasers series. They met in a tavern, they split the party, and coming soon eventually, they played their role. Uh, I also got into D&D way too early in my life and be- twisted me into an obsession that has fueled all of my creative endeavors. Hi, everybody. I am Jordan H. Bartlett, the author of Contest of Queens and Queen's Catacombs, and in 2025, Queendom Come. I am someone who has moved about all my life, so New Zealand, Banff, the UK, but I've played D&D in all of those places. Uh, I, yeah, I think there's a saying, if you want to control what happens in a session, write a book. And so I had one game where I was like, oh, I would like to make these changes. So I ended up writing books. (laughs) (laughs) And now with introductions out of the way, let's jump into... Well, I'd say the name of the world, but we've got a lot of worlds to jump into. So let's get started (laughs) in Asher. We find ourselves in the mystical lands of Asher, swooping down over a starlit sky, over the sprawling kingdom of Corsair, or Corsar. We kiss the waves as we soar off the northwest coast to a secluded island housing a relic of the old world. The infinite library stands proud. Its ancient elven architecture flowing almost like water carved of stone and denotes a particularly natural and somewhat alien presence of a monolithic structure. Deep within the spiraling stacks of recorded knowledge is a man frantically seeking answers. Phoenix, or Elijah, would you like to describe what Phoenix looks like as he's looking for more info on the Cult of Stars? Yeah, Phoenix is a man of average height, caramel skin, and a scraggly black beard. That is, he always fails to keep under under proper condition because he is always busy thinking of other things. Dressed in dressed in forged forged arcane armor, complete with a long red dust leather duster coat. He is probably at that moment frantically staring at the shelves around him while tapping away at his bracer, trying to figure out where he is, because this place is a notorious maze for people who don't know what they're doing. He does. Yeah, you uh, definitely know 
where you are, and you're not lost at all within the infinite pocket dimensions, within the infinite library. You haven't gone too deep. You're keeping track of things, 100%. It's under control. Mm -hmm. I would really like you to roll an investigation mm -hmm. check for me with this advantage because you are absolutely lost. Yeah. Uh, with this advantage, that's a nat one. Ooh! Woof! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> damn! That Ow. is a great start! I up right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with uh, kicking off this game with a natural one, uh, Phoenix, you uh, pull a scroll off of the shelves. Uh, in front of you, and as you pull the scroll, you hear a tear, and immediately, like, this black smoke uh, shoots out of this tear. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw for me. Yep. Ooh, that's so much better. Great. Uh, 17 plus... I had that number up here. 17 plus... 19 total. 19? That's a success. Uh, you yep. managed to dodge out of the way and avoid the worst of this, uh, whatever this is, as what seems like this tiny, smoky elk's mouth comes and snaps at you before it dissolves into nothing. Uh, you uh, do take a little bit of damage as some lightning arcs off of it, so you take uh, six points of lightning damage. Uh, Jesus. And w this scroll that you have is just smoking gently. Uh, but you see that uh, written on the text, uh, you see uh, sort of cut off is Urborn. So whatever this scroll has might have information on the Starborn if you want to try to read it. Well, uh, Would you like to attempt to? I'm going to take a step back. Quickly yeah. just look around. Make sure nothing else is about to explode. Everything seems fine, based off your I might cast perception. I might cast... Identify? Yeah. Yeah, I'm probably just going to cast on Identify it. on the scroll real quick. Instantly you gather, the School of Magic is the Conjuration School of Magic, which is about creating things and breaking through barriers within space. Um, you know that this is an alien artifact, not of this world. Um... And it's written in a language that you have never heard of. It's called English. Um, as we know that the oh, world no, of Asher, Asher doesn't have England in it to then have English. Um, but you can They do not. You understand the language. It looks like the common tongue. Uh, but you know that it, uh, wherever this is from, it is known as English. Uh, and uh, it's... It, the scroll doesn't have magical properties, but there is this deep connection that it has, and the smoke that's coming off of it is identified as a creature that is a monstrosity. Huh. On, honestly, as soon as the reading came back that it wasn't from this world, he was reading it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I like about artificers. Uh, yeah, you start reading it... Um, this scroll, uh, though it is fractured, it details, uh, it is writing that talks about uh, a cult. Not the cult of stars, but uh, it is uh, dubbed the cult of trees, uh, the cult of feasts, um, the cult of the all-seer. Uh, it goes by many different names, and they worship this being... Uh, that feeds off of fear and uh, has consumed their world. Um, and uh, the writing gets more frantic towards the end and more scratched and messier as the sort of tone of the writing changes from being something scared of this thing to then being in awe of it and loving it. Like, while it was being written, their perspective changed. Um... As you're reading, you sort of get lost in the text and find that it's gone very... That wherever you are, it's gotten very, very dark. Um, I'd like you to make another dexter... Actually, no. What's your AC? Uh, AC right now is 18 with the uh, enhanced armor. Great. Uh, with your enhanced armor, you sort of... Uh, you can feel the, the hair on the back of your neck prickle up and you dodge out of the way, not realizing that, uh, not knowing why, until 
there is a growling uh, that snaps behind you. And you look and you see that this, the reason it's so dark is because this room is now filled with this putrid black smoke that is attacking you. Uh, what would you like to do? As we- uh, Draw a wand. Yeah, draw your wand. Draw a wand, set to force, fire. Uh, roll an attack for me, please. Let me pull yep. up that block of this thing. Okay, that is 19 plus 11, 30. <laughs> okay, yeah, that hits. Uh, roll your damage against it. Uh, okay. This is just uh, your is force nine. blast? Yeah, it's just the force blast from the wand. Great. Nothing fancy. Uh, nine, one, extra three. Uh, 13, then plus two. It, 15 points of force damage. 15 points of force damage. Uh, down to 15 is... <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, you uh, unleash this blast of force. It uh, concusses this uh, solidified thing of smoke, which dissipates and then reforms uh, and comes at you again. Uh, it begins to take more shape, and it starts swiping at you. It's going to make... How many attacks can it make with its oh, multi-attack? Four. Uh, four attacks against you. You said 19 is your AC? Uh, 18 right now. 18. Great. Four. four. What the it, fuck? Uh, that hits. It may turn in. It will turn into 23 when I panic. That, hits. <laughs> that also hits. Okay. Uh, <coughs> you can tell that this thing um, is cl like throwing these clumsy swipes at you that uh, you would be able to dodge out of the way but they all connect because this thing is getting really ding dang big. Uh, you are going to take, what's that first one is that, uh, 12 points of damage, 24, uh, so 36 points of damage plus, mm -hmm. uh, coming up to why am I rolling so high? Uh, that's, what did I say? 36? 36. I think you actually said four. Oh, yeah. I heard four. Uh, <laughs> I heard four. I have to do this math can, here because can it's... Can I come in and, and use any of my things at this point or no? Uh, not in the middle of its turn, but you will soon. <laughs> uh, I need you to make a strength saving throw. Or no, I need you to make an athletics check or acrobatics, whichever is higher. Yeah, it's acrobatics. Oh, that's awful. Seven. Seven. Great. You're grappled. Um, what's mm -hmm. your max health again? <laughs> uh, 93. Great. Uh, I'm so glad to hear that because you have taken uh, 76 points of damage. Um, oh, total. As, yeah, in total. Uh, you are also grappled as this thing takes bigger shape. These big claws rip at you, like made out of smoke and bone. Wham! Grab you with one hand, pick you up, throw you, bounce you off the floor, smack you with a tail that swings around, which slams you into the library's walls. You crack, crash through like two shelves, and then it pours after you, and uh, this giant mouth forms and like, it it's made out of smoke, but it has these uh, pointed, gnarled bone teeth, which then snap onto you and crush down. You can feel your ribs crack. Immediately, you cough up blood as one of your lungs collapses underneath you. Uh, and then uh, a, there's the sound of tearing paper as uh, this hole opens up in the world next to you. And... Jess, would you like to describe your character as you jump through this tear in reality? I sure would. Okay. Um, so my 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 character um is an I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, MC correct. It's an Asimar. Asimar? Yeah. Asimar. Um mm -hmm. and I'm a very, you know, inconspicuous looking Asimar. I kind of just look like me with my exact face, which for the listeners, black hair, brown eyes, pale skin, um, but I'm tall, um, which also works for this character. Um, Jess is 5'10", 
we'll make daffodil pickle 510 as well. Um, and yeah, and I've, uh, I've, I've got this cool dress on so that I could kind of embody her today. So that is what um, she looks like. And I've got this pen in my hand that's like this black and gold thing that has kind of sparks flying from it that are creating this portal, um, which presumably Phoenix, you would clock. And I'm going to reach out my hand and say in my worst Arnold Schwarzenegger impression, because I cannot do an impression. No, Come no, no. With that is not, that is not, that is not the energy you bring. You can do a perfect <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger impression because you're about to do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, my Austrian heritage did not serve me well for this, but I will just come with me if you want to live. <laughs> Phoenix, the reference goes over your head, but there is this Azamar holding out her hand to you uh, as you're in the jaws of this thing. Um, Je- do you take the hand? Uh, yeah, two. Th- yeah, I do two things. I take the hand in one one arm, and other hand, take out a fire sphere, I'm going to cast Fireball behind this thing so that it gets hit in the radius and I don't. On Great. The uh, there's no behind because it's too big for there to be anything behind it. Uh, but you can shoot sure. a Fireball at it for sure. Uh, it's going to roll its dexterity Just... save. It has advantage on saving throws against magical spell effects. Uh, what's your spell save, DC? Uh, 17. 17... You rolled seven plus dexterity save. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. It does not have good dexterity. Uh, yeah, it fails. Roll damage. Yeah. Oh, nice. Three, four, five, six, six em, seven, six eight. Yeah. No, we went from not taking, we went from the standard shot to the, oh no, blow it up option. Yeah. The contingency right, plan, I believe, is what it's referred to. I mean, <laughs> yep. fireball for. An artificer is plan B, but I'm a wizard player. It's plan A, B, C yeah. through Z. <laughs> Fireball is the only spell in my book. <laughs> 28 points of fire damage. Yeah. While grabbing onto this person, just like, get us out of here. Fuck yeah. Fuck <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> right. uh, I'm just going to let you behind the Can I just like pull him second. through the portal lickety split? Uh, you're going to certainly try. Uh, and I'm oh, gonna let you guys behind the screen for a quick second. Uh, that it is, uh, after 28 damage of fire, as you uh, launch this fire spirit, uh, fire erupts in this thing, and a second mouth comes and just eats the fire and uh, burps it up as it drops down to a measly 533 HP. Um, yeah. And. Uh, Jess, I need you to make a, uh, athletics check. Uh, 15. 15. Great. Uh, it rolled a 16 on the die and has a plus eight to strength. Um, you do not pull Phoenix out of its bite. Uh, Phoenix, you can make an acrobatics check with advantage because you're being helped. Uh, the DC is 20. Sure. Sure, 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 sure. Use your good dice. Where? Yeah, 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 don't <laughs> use the bad ones you were using earlier. Use the weighted oh. one. Yeah. <laughs> use the cheater's <laughs> dice. <laughs> Just all 20. Uh, yeah, the one that's all 20. With advantage, you said. Yes. With advantage, advantage because you said, right? we're being helped. Yeah. Okay. 15. All right. And Flash of Genius. That's a 22. Hey, Woo! you did it. You're able, so as uh, Daffodil Pickle, even though you don't know her name, is pulling you out, you're able to wriggle free of this thing's teeth before you can feel it try to swallow you, um, which would have been very bad for the promotion of your books if you just died. <laughs> uh, but you are pulled through this portal, and then uh, just you take the pen and you reseal this portal as the tip of the fountain pen touches the edge, it zips up. And, uh, Phoenix, you find yourself, uh, in a much more peaceful place. Uh, it is this cozy little, uh, room that you realize is made out of thick parchment. And you can see, like, writing sort of gently scrolling along the walls through these folded bits of paper. Um, and Jess, is there anything you would like to say, uh... Oh, like sure. Phoenix, yeah. It, 
Y'all can take a little second to chat. Uh, made of parchment, you said the room was? Mm-hmm. That's unfortunate. This is gonna stain. I cough up blood. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, you do. Uh, Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> is it probable? Is it okay if I just, you know, cast Cure Wounds on you quick? Is that something I can do? God. Yeah? Okay, cool. I won't I'd say like no. To do that. <laughs> Great. Yeah, so I you, would like to do that. You cast Cure Wounds on Phoenix. I do. What was your name again? Yes, my name is Daffodil Pickle. So lovely to meet you. Um, I know who you are. Your name is Phoenix. And um, I have recruited you on a mission to save, well, the universe as you know it. Um, are you in or are you in? Can I take a nap first? Oh, yeah. Well, I've got other people to save and recruit for this mission. So, so you can chill here while I do that. That sounds great. And we move as sinks Phoenix to <laughs> sinks to the floor in a pile of his own blood and misery. Uh, we zip across the realms to the upper realms in Freya. Uh, high in the clouds upon verdant cliff sides, bathed in gold and propriety, we journey to the Freyan realms. Uh, within the most elegantly constructed castle one might ever dare see, history has just been made. A young Lorian who dared to ascend and claim the mantle of queen is quickly making progress toward changing the world. We move to Jack's Tabert shortly after the end of a rather damning council meeting where the Council of Four was shockingly uh, arrested as traitors. Uh, Jax, it's been an hour and a half since this, and you are currently in your chambers uh, with Lena um, trying to figure out your next moves. Um, or no, not with... You're, you're in, like, the hospital with Lena unconscious uh, with uh, Amber uh, sitting across from you. Amber uh, says, so what's our next plan? I still can't believe that worked. <laughs> I think it's okay. going to get a lot harder before it gets easier. I do too. Um, I mean, Hera is going to be an ally, a friend... Well, well, what if is she gets her way? Did, you didn't promise her to become queen at some point, did you? Because I don't know what I would do if Hera Clostrum became queen. I didn't quite promise her that. Lovely. I may have promised to marry her brother in exchange for the power that her house can provide the crown. Oh. And. Master Leshy always said there is no problem that doesn't have a solution. So I just know I will be able to find a solution to this problem. I just don't think I know what that looks like yet. Well, I mean, well, no, that wouldn't work. Uh, and like Amber is very intelligent, very good at what she does, but what she does is beat people up. Um, and can't quite is like trying to help with coming up with a plan with what to do next, but just can't seem to manage it. But luckily she's, or unluckily she's saved by alarm bells ringing. There's a bunch of just like these high alert clanging that goes on and you hear people starting to scream outside. Amber immediately jumps to attention uh, and her hand as it so rarely does drops and rests on the pommel of her sword and says, something's happening. Uh, my queen, we must get you to a safe chamber unless, and she looks at you questioningly, knowing that you're, you, you have a tendency to sort of run into danger uh, and sort of gives you a look of what would you like to do? If we can help, we should help. 
I trust that you'll be okay taking over role of head of the Queen's Guard while Master Chef Rathbone is missing? She stands up a little bit straighter and nods her head. Of course, uh, my liege. Uh, right. Uh, and she sort of adopts this uh, more figure as you've raised her station. She opens the door immediately. Boom! Someone runs by and almost like like knocks into the door, stumbles. A knight, like a guard pair runs by uh, one carrying the other as just a full arm is gone from the one that's being carried as her body is dissolving. Uh, and uh, they fall down to the ground in front of you, screaming as their bodies are eaten and dissolve in this black smoke. Um, Amber curses, uh, draws her sword, and uh, runs out. I'm going to go fight whatever's happening here. You find wherever you think you're going to be most useful, and charges ahead, immediately thrown and launched back as you hear this uh, down the hall. What do you do as you're still standing in the room with Lena, who's unconscious? Uh, then I'm, is there anyone else in the room with me? Uh, no, it, well, it's, there's Lena, but she's still comatose. Okay, I think because I know they're likely after the queen, mm -hmm. um, Jax is going to leave the room and try and barricade the door to protect Lena mm -hmm. um, and head for uh, there's probably just one in an outdoor. Maybe she'll just head for where Amber went, grabbing whatever heavy blunt object she can find on the way out. Great, roll a quick investigation check for me. Ah, a natural 20! Hey! Huge! Let's go! Uh, <laughs> That's 22. Better start than me. So you have... You have a choice here of what you find. One, uh, barricading the door is going to be no problem. There's a full-on bookcase that, by something that exploded, has rattled uh, down, and it's like halfway over the door already, so all you have to do is step through and kick it, and it'll fall down and keep Lena from being attacked. Um, and you see uh, sitting on, uh, hanging on the wall, there's, uh, there's a coat rack, which can be used as a staff. There's a full-on training sword, uh, and then there's also an actual real sword. Which would you like to grab? Uh, ooh. Does she have any daggers on her person? Because yes, she she's does, been trained with she daggers. She does still okay. have her daggers on her person. Perfect. Then she will take the staff. Great, yeah. So you grab the coat rack and snap it. So now it's like a bow staff. Uh, you step out, you kick down the bookcase, it... <laughs> falls you uh lock the door behind you uh you turn to go after amber and you see chaos as uh half of the castle walls are down and in flames uh there's people scattered all over the place guard pairs and soldiers are scrambling to fight a tide of what looks like just a massive storm cloud rumbling with deep purple lightning uh as it shift slowly consuming the land um it is 50 stories tall a full just wave as uh like ballisti are being fired out you see griffins are soaring and trying to snap at this thing uh and any like you watch a griffin a magical being of great report and power swoops down claws at this thing divine light sparks and then a head opens up 10 times larger than the griffin and boom, snaps shut. And there's just feathers uh, that then dissolve into dust. Uh, and it's oh, no. all bad. Uh, the people who aren't, like the guard pairs who were, you saw were running towards it are running to grab people to pull them away and have been running away. Um, no one knows what's happening how would you like to proceed in this chaos? And you, like, the wall, the, the walls are half destroyed. You can see everything right now. Oh my gosh. Uh, I think, um, and it's all kind of cloudy, smoky. There's nothing tangible that you can uh, like You can that. see that uh, in this cloud of smoke, you roll a perception or arcana check for me. Uh, I would like to roll a 
perception, and that would be just eight. Eight. Uh, so there's not many details that you can pick out in this thing. You can see as it's like moving forward every now and then, what looks to be a giant claw slams on the ground and is like dragging it forward. Uh, you can see uh, in this swirling whirlwind, in like this uh, cloudy tide, uh, there's shards of bone that are flying through every now and then. You can see almost what looks like faces, like screaming faces appear in the smoke and then vanish and are just smoke again. Um, but that's really all you see. You don't see any tangible form to this. Whenever something like hits it, you can see that it dissolves a little bit, but then it'll reform um, whenever something normal strikes it. Uh, Jax will, so she's got her staff and Lena's safe in the mm -hmm. um, barricaded room. She's going to try and round up as many guard pairs as she can find and kind of split it so that we've got some people rushing to um, like archers mm -hmm. to form kind of like an archer wall. Uh, and then the other half to get as many people out of the palace as possible away from this cloud. Great. Uh, roll a persuasion check for me. And this is going to be against its uh, spellcasting DC of 17. Oh, okay. Uh, I got 16. <laughs> oh, no. Um, Devastation. Yeah. Uh, you're trying to round it's up just guard. just to be in queen, you know? <laughs> yeah. You're trying to round up guard pairs. And there's a few that do, like, heed your call and pick up arrows and fire. But once they see that whatever they're firing isn't having much effect, they drop their weapons and run. Um, the few that are very loyal to you will stand to protect you, but they're not going to charge at it. Uh, as you can feel, this thing is emitting waves of energy. Roll a wisdom check for me. Ooh. A wisdom save or a wisdom check? Do a wisdom save, actually. Yeah, that's a good idea. Ooh, that is a dirty 20. Dirty 20, great. So not only do you resist this thing's frightful presence, you can feel that there is a preternatural force that feels very familiar to you. Uh, it feels oh. like, it feels similar to the power of the Undercourt, this sort of like oppressive wave of terror and uh, fear and just like awfulness uh as it tries to like bring you back to these terrible memories but it's definitely different because the undercourt brings you back to memories this thing is just unadulterated pure adrenaline soaked fear uh that it is emitting uh most people are succumbing to this and just straight up running away uh because you've saved uh those that are standing close to you seem to also have saved and are resisting it um but it's getting closer. Is there anything else you would like to do as it's uh, now, bam, a solid claw grabs onto one of the towers of the castle and the stones begin to crumble under it and dissolve. It's not like it smashes through. It's just slowly swallowing whatever it touches. Oh my gosh. Uh, I think uh, she would call out to the fleeing people um, we're stronger united, we have to stick against this. But inside, she's probably making this sound. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think if she can... Uh, if, are there griffins nearby? Yeah, there's a few nearby. Uh, a lot of them uh, had stormed uh, this thing, and once they found that they couldn't beat it, they've uh, started to fly away. But one griffin, um, what was the name of the one that gave her a ride down the mountain? Uh, Altus Hermes. Altus Hermes. Altus Hermes swoops down out of the sky and... <laughs> I don't know what a sound of Griffin makes. That's the closest I'm going to get. Uh, that's it. Yeah. That's, that's exactly that's what it is. Uh, that's the sound of Griffin makes in this world. Uh, it lands and it like uh, 
is leaping back and forth, panicked, like looking up at it, looking down at you. It uh, like sort of gently rams its uh, beak into your chest and then bows down for you. Amazing. Uh, Jax is going to um, request that she can get on its back because you don't just jump on a griffin. Uh, oh, it, it, it did she... away with all propriety in this moment. Um, it fully <laughs> like... In a moment, in a moment that shocks everyone around you, not only did it land next to you, it was like, "Hey, let's go!" and like bowed down Get and out. was like, "Let's go, let's go, let's go! It's time to run." Uh, so yeah, the upper round people are British, but the Griffins are like New Yorkers. It's like, "Hey, come on, we it's time to go, lady. Let's go, let's go." Uh, uh, so she's going to get on its back and kind of. Uh, (laughs) with the uh, idea hopefully shared with the griffin that she just wants to get height and see what they're dealing with and get above it uh roll an animal hand and check with advantage is this a new familiar for Jax? can we make that happen or no yeah so Jax uh will eventually get a summon steed ability which will allow her to summon altus hermes uh, it was animal handling, so that is 18. 18, great. Uh, yeah, it uh, fully mind links with you and is like, yep, that sounds like a good plan. Let's go, boss. Uh, <laughs> and you hop on board and then boom, wing spread, wham, uh, shoots up into the sky, soaring, and you get a better look at all of this. Roll a perception check for me. Oh my gosh, I promise I'm not cheating. That's another, another 20. Na- okay. Another nap. Hell another yeah. 23. Yeah. I, oh I want these guys especially for this game. I think it's good luck. Hell yeah, <laughs> it is. Uh... Uh, yeah, you fly up. You get a great uh, look over all of the realms. You see that this thing is not just come for the upper realms. It is already consumed the lower realms. It's in a massive circle that is slowly closing in on you. Um, and uh, you see that the world uh, where it is not smoke and ash is... Uh, this withered hellscape that is slowly dissolving into nothing. Uh, excuse me. Um, and it's, this is the apocalypse. This is the end of the world and you don't know how or why. And this pit of despair opens up inside of you as a head <laughs> rises out of this thing reaching, clawing at nothing, and you see where uh, out of this column of smoke that's rising towards you, it'll sprout an arm which will grab into the air itself, and you watch as almost the crumpling of paper in the space of nothingness as it claws on and is climbing up towards you. This massive mouth opens a twisted, like, top half of a buck's Uh, head, these massive spiraling horns open up, lightning crackling in between them as it opens its mouth towards you. Uh, There's a splash of golden light above you and a portal opens in the sky and you see standing there a caramel-skinned man with the most unruly, unkempt beard you've ever seen. Uh, Phoenix, do you launch an attack at this thing? Are you launching a spell at it to try to slow it down as Daffodil Pickle reaches her hand down to Jax? I know uh, in yeah. some universe someone will understand me, so I'm going to once again say, come with me if you want to live. And actually, this time, it's in a perfect Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. Yeah, you had it. That, that <laughs> so, um, it. Why do you keep... Yeah, thank you. Why do you keep saying it like that? <laughs> you keep saying... I, love, I love this idea. For dramatic you... effect, Okay. Every realm, she just tries the same reference until she gets a laugh. It's gonna happen. It's gonna that is exactly happen. it. Um, who knows if it's this universe or the next, but I know someone will get the reference, so yeah. I'm going to just keep going. Jax, oh, yeah. Jax looks at you with a blank expression. It wasn't this time. Uh, Elijah. <laughs> it wasn't this. It, it wasn't, wasn't this time. Uh, Elijah, were you casting a spell at this thing, or were you trying to help uh, Jax with a spell? Uh, I'm just force blasting this thing because I, it's, it's t- already too big. So I'm just hoping to just annoy it while we get out. 
Absolutely. I'm not going to make you roll because any of the damage you do is not going to uh, really hurt it to kill it. But you are... Uh, these blasts of energy and invisible waves of force are concussing it, knocking off like these tendrils that are uh, reaching up to grab at this griffin, uh, which is of a different species than any you're familiar with, but it's definitely a griffin. Um, and it's But you're, you're uh, keeping... Uh, the, these tendrils off as Hermes flies up through the portal uh, and uh, Daffodil Pickle uh, carves the portal closed. Once again, Jax, you are now in this space uh, with these two strangers. Your realm is left behind, but there wasn't really a realm left to leave behind. As everyone is calming down, I just go, hey girl. Um, <laughs> and uh, just, you know, very casually open the conversation, like, as such, so. Hey. <laughs> really? Where are um, we? Well, welcome to uh, the uh, writer's room, is what we call it, is what I'm calling it. MC, is that what I can call it? Uh, you can call it whatever you like. There is an official name, uh, which we will learn Oh, soon. Do I know we... the official name? You do know the official name. Uh, but Daffodil Pickle Can is uh, Fickle Pickle uh, and calls things oh whatever she God. wants, however she wants. <laughs> I like to <laughs> rhyme. It's already begun. It's already begun. <laughs> and with that. Um, God damn it. <laughs> well, should I give any insight into where we are? Can I say anything else? or If you would like should, to. Are we just. Okay. Um. Well, before we get, before I, I whisk us away to our, oh, yeah. our final destination, um, you are here because, um, as you might have been able to tell, there is this terrible, terrible creature that is trying to rewrite your endings. And if you don't know what I mean, stick around and find out. Um, and there is only one person who knows how to deal with this creature. One person who has defeated this person, who has defeated this creature before. Um, we have to go convince him to help us because he might be our only hope. Uh, are you in or are you in? Of course I'm in. And Wonderful. MC, whisk us away. Yeah, we fly uh, to the sacred lands where this hero of legend, uh, this tide of a beast has destroyed both of your worlds, undaunted by arrows and fireballs and everything under the sun. Griffins, these mighty creatures, stood no chance. The Starbreakers, uh, as scattered as they were, could not stop this beast, uh, this monstrosity, this apocalypse, world-ending threat. And we go to the only place where the only person in the universe who's ever stopped this before. We go to... Washington. And we are in the suburbs of Washington on Earth. And Josh Mallory closes uh, the final chapter of American Gods as he's finally finished reading. Josh, what do you look like and what are you doing on this lovely Sunday afternoon? You're back home. It's been months since the Pacific Coast Trail. Things with you and Deb are going pretty well you're in couples therapy but that's not today it's sunday it's your day uh josh mallory is um a slightly underfed mid-30s tech bro um you can see a little bit too much of his cheekbones when he smiles and his skin has that sort of like flaccid pallor of somebody that spends too much time under fluorescent lighting um he is uh, has just finished reading sitting on the couch, um, but he does have a laptop open on the side table where work notifications are sort of pinging in, in gentle, constant rhythm as uh, Teams and Chime and all of these various work apps uh, update him constantly as to what's going on at work. All right, yeah, yeah, you've got work going on right now. Even though it's Sunday, the grind never stops. Uh, and the door opens and uh, closing it behind her and then locking it is Deb, uh, who says, Hey, Pugs, how are you doing? How's uh, you've done with that book yet? 
Yes, I was uh, I was playing Warzone, but I decided to enlighten myself and spend some time reading, oh, which is I'm what we should so all do glad. all the time. Yeah, we I definitely I agree though. Uh, I am wondering what you were feeling like for dinner. I just got back from uh, yoga. Uh, what are you feeling like? Okay, okay. Now, hear me out. I do know that we spent $160 at Safeway yesterday to make lamb curry, but what if we ordered pizza? <sighs> we or Chipotle. I could we, do either. I could do, I could do pizza or Chipotle. We said we were going to be cooking more. Or ramen. I have been meaning to try that new ramen place. We can put the, the lamb in the fridge, we, or we can put that in the freezer, right. save it for later. Yeah, let's order ramen. Uh, Josh, roll an arcana check. Roll for ramen. Roll for ramen. That <laughs> uh, is a uh, 18, flat 18. Flat 18. Uh, you get this uh, strange sensation that you've never felt before, but you know exactly what it is. As clear and as natural as you know what the wind feels like on your face as you're going on a run, um, you know that this sensation, uh, you sense a planar portal has opened nearby. You don't know what a planar portal- And I know portal... what that- I, I, Yeah, okay, all right, cool. Yeah, I was like, I'm, what the fuck? Yeah, you know the general gist of a portal and magic and mysticism is from fiction, but- there, one's opened, and you know that it that's what it is. Mm. Okay. Uh, and, do I have a sense of, like, uh, proximity? Like, is it in the room, or is it just somewhere? Uh, it's above you. Like I look up. You look up. Uh, it's your ceiling. Uh, Deb Sick. sort of cocks her head at you. You all right, Pugs? What's happening? Did you hear that? I think there's a dog upstairs. I need to go check. Don't come up there. Uh, what do you, and she's cut off as the ceiling <laughs> smashes in, uh, and there's a dust cloud of plaster, uh, dust and wood, uh, like splintering as a body, wham, falls down into your living room. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you both scream in terror, uh, as fully, <laughs> A human body has landed. Uh, moral of perception check for me? Uh, dirty 20. Dirty 20. You recognize the, this person. Um, you know who they are because you see them in the mirror every day. Uh, you have dropped down. F nope. Fully Josh <laughs> Mallory has <laughs> dropped down in front of you, covered in blood. Uh, has a full-on Mossberg rifle uh, in his hand. He's dressed in, like, thick hunting gear. Um, all stuff that you own, but he's got, like, a gash in the side of his face. He's, like, got these sparkling, like, crackling bolts of electricity on him, and he, <sighs> he looks around, looks up at you. <laughs> You're... Ah, <sighs> uh, he... I, I, I really quick before before this figure speaks to me, I've yeah. got two fingers on my pulse and I'm and I'm finding five things I can see, four things I can hear, three <laughs> things I can smell. Like there's no fucking mm -hmm. way, right? I'm looking at the sealed uh, edibles jar on the countertop to make sure it's still <laughs> sealed. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's sealed. You still haven't cracked that little sticker on it. Yeah, that was gonna be you know with the. Uh, lamb roast you were gonna make, but now you've turned into ramen, thank God. Uh, and so that's still set. Uh, you ground yourself with uh, five things in the room. Um, there's uh, yourself sitting in front of you, covered in blood. There's also yourself sitting in front of you, covered in blood. There's also, oh God, yourself in front of you, covered in blood. What the hell? Uh, can't ground yourself, it's not happening. Uh, and this other you gets up, grabs you by the shoulders, and says, whatever you do, say no. It's not worth it. Just take an edible now, ride it out. It's gonna, just say no. And then a portal opens behind them in this weird, like, uh, have you seen, you, you've seen the, sp into the I, across the Spider-Verse? Yeah, of course. Yeah? Uh, you know when Da Vinci 
uh, Da Vinci Vulture shows up and there's all that like weird papery uh, and like math yeah. and stuff. Something like that opens up behind this other you who's then uh, ripped back through it and then it shuts. And you're left alone with Deb in your room, in your living room, covered in dust. And there's splinters on your shoulder. She fully passes out. Uh, Roll a constitution saving throw. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. Seven. You pass out. <laughs> cool. and, and we sit in the dark for a minute. It's a defense mechanism. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you wake up. Uh, who knows how long later. Uh, your living room is destroyed. Uh, Deb is also coming to... Okay, what was that? What was it? Who? Was that you? Uh, she looks at the no, edible no. Uh, container on the counter. That's closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I have two pieces of information for you. Number one, I now, mm. in this moment, agree with you about the renter's insurance. Second... Um, <laughs> Is it possible that we were fumigated somehow, a la rat catcher, and this is all a hallucination? That's got to be it, right? For sure, right? For sure. Like, uh, fumigated, and that made us, gave us similar strength to being on PCP, and we destroyed this place mm -hmm. unwittingly, and have had a shared hallucination of you falling through the ceiling. Uh, and then being because you and I through. both know what PCP feels like for sure, for sure, for sure, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've seen it on you know the rookie and like you get super. Ah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pour some wine. I'm gonna push. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna you're gonna pour some wine and I'm gonna pass my yeah. hand through this 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 debris and watch my hand's gonna go right through it because this is a hallucination. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. This isn't real. Uh -huh. So. I'm going to swap my hand through like a, like a fallen splintered two by four. Sure. You take uh, two points of piercing damage as you uh, inject yourself with a bunch of splinters. Oh God. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, more wine. Yeah. No, I'm, yep. I'm, uh, she, bigger, she pours a glass, glass of uh, wine, a big, big glass of wine filled at the top, hands it to you, downs hers, pours another. Okay. This is real. Um, were we and her? She's interrupted again by. I tell you what, the updated uh, the updated minimum delivery fee for DoorDash totally worth the time saved. I will, I'll walk to the door to get the ramen. Yeah, you walk to the door, get the ramen. Uh, forget the fact that you haven't ordered yet, and it's uh, fully three p.m. Um, you open the door. Uh, ramen is not at the door for you. Um, the most extravagantly dressed uh, door dashers are uh, standing in front of you uh, as a five foot 10 uh, woman with a slight uh, halo and these flowing starry dresses uh, stands before you, uh, a uh, sort of average height guy with the scraggliest beard uh, in full wizard robes, unclear. Uh, he's got a crazy gauntlet on him and then a woman in shining full plate, uh, shield and sword strapped to her back, uh, flowing auburn hair, uh, is a child, couldn't be more than 18, um, but looks more badass than the rest of them put together. Uh, Comic-Con's in town, I guess. Uh, and Daphne Pickle. Really? Uh, what would you like to say to uh, the Hero of Ages? Third time's a chime. Come with me if you want to live. Oh, Terminator. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I, this is I what look I at, live I look at Jacques. I, I look at Jacques like, what? what, what is... <laughs> Do you know what's going on? Is that a spell? You guys are the most elaborate hallucination I have ever seen. <laughs> Look I mean, at is this. That the this ramen? is great. You're like a little. You're like a little Halloween person. So this is the queen of your world, and she's just. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Deb uh, is like. Oh, it's 
January, but、uh, we don't have any candy for trick or treaters because it is fully January.、Um, fully January. Can we help you? We are Do I look、sure、like the Terminator、right、to you people? No. The, the Terminators. No,、uh, this is real life. Yeah. Josh, is, you're、be. coming with us. Sorry, no, sure. Yeah, I'll totally. Yeah, no, I'll go. I'll for sure go with you. Yeah, in the middle of the afternoon on a casual Sunday. I don't know any of your hey, names. The fate what you're of the、here. world rests on your shoulders. The fate、so. of my afternoon rests on me staying here. So. Well, that's really nice. Yeah, Bob, we we we're but... gonna order ramen and hire a contractor. Yeah. And All look of those at our renters insurance policy.、Mm-hmm. More than the ending of your story. That's so vague. I mean, I That's guess. That's right. Come with me. Your your this is your your choices are yes or yes. You have to come with us because、uh, you remember Feast from a few months ago. Well, it's back and it's back with a vengeance and it's eating all of your stories. And very soon it will be coming for this one. If you want to live, if you want、uh, to keep on living your blissful little human life here, you have to come with. I'm not gonna lie; she always talks like that. But there is something. It destroyed both of my. We need、moms. your help. We need your help.、Uh, okay, and I mean this with like zero offense.、Um, is there anyone else?、Not、You're the only person who. Josh is the only person who has faced this beast and won before. Oh,、uh, one is a strong sort of strong term. That's fair. Who、what、has?、Happened? That is fair.、Um, Josh is the only person who has faced this beast before and who has gotten out without being consumed by it fully.、Um, so, yes, it has to be you. I will、uh, sort of turn around and and make some kind of excuse. To my wife, I think I'm sort of like gently floating out of my own body at this point, sort of、uh-huh. like, like feeling my knees weaken and like a hollow space carve itself into my gut, and I'm just like, if it's just a hallucination, what's the harm? Sure, sure, dude. Yeah, let's 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 fucking save the world, tiny <laughs> tiny armored person and wizard guy, and also Mercy from Overwatch too. <laughs> Not a wizard. You're so you're you're. <laughs> <laughs> Not a wizard.、Uh, I want that to be canon. I want Phoenix to kind of whisper under his breath. Oh yeah, no, that he absolutely does. <laughs> yeah. Um, Deb says, okay, sure. Um, so you're just gonna leave me? And she gestures to the living room with this. I, Sorry, I, I can't hear you. I put my head in, look around. What do you, what do you mean you、I、can't hear head, me? The、around. portal opens. Wait, you're right. It's if we're, we're back, not on、I、the phone. It's not like we're there's bad connection. You're walking through the portal. I'm Don't walking, worry. I'm going through a tunnel. If all goes well, you won't remember any of this.、I'm、Just like gonna... any normal trip. The portal closes, and you all arrive. In this strange space, Josh, this is the wildest trip.、Uh, you find that as you stepped through the portal, your hunting rifle appeared on your back, and、mm. uh, your like Sunday clothes transformed into the same like、uh, toughened, like Kevlar-lined hiking gear、uh, that you have,、uh, and you realize that you look minus the blood exactly like the version of you that appeared in your living room, completely destroyed.、Um, And、pretty pretty jarring, pretty jarring for Josh. I would say he's kind、yeah. of he's he's.、Uh, I think it's been a minute since he's been out in the woods,、uh, and definitely been a minute since these clothes found their way out of the locked box in his garage. So、mm-hmm. I think he looks pretty shaken as he steps into this sort of paper house scenario. Yeah, and、That's、as you、fair. step through, you're not going to vomit, are you? Oh no, for sure going to vomit. The question is when. <laughs> I mean, there's a perfectly bloodied spot on the floor that kind of everyone's allocated as the、uh, the dirtying this room spot. I feel like that's an appropriate place to to the blood the blood and vomit、to. spot, which every house yeah, has yeah. to have. I agree. Of course, yeah. And then a voice. 
uh, comes from, it seems like it comes from Daffodil Pickle, but Daffodil Pickle's mouth isn't moving. Uh, as uh, you hear a voice say, ah, finally, we're all convened. Welcome, heroes, to the margins. Hello. Oh, yeah, so I, well, I, I'm here. Hello. Uh, and you all look around. I reach this. into my pocket. I reach into my pocket and pull out my little ladybug familiar yeah. and and give um, and give a little precursory speech of. Um, so, as I've told some of you, my name is Daffodil Pick Pickle. Um, I am just merely an assistant editor. Daffodil is not just uh, merely an assistant editor. This is Helga, our editor, and she will tell you what we're doing here. Yes, we have a long journey ahead of us. Let's get started. Thank you all so much for tuning in and unwrapping this special edition Dungeons and Dragons episode of CamCat Unwrapped Into the Margins. That is a mouthful. You can find all of our unputdownable CamCat books at camcatbooks.com or wherever books are sold. You can also find all of us who were in the show today in the social links down below. They're going to be appearing magically. <laughs> and we'll see you all in two weeks in the next episode.